Like as you can see guys, I'm getting a lot of locks here, which is good. Now, what we can do together right now, we can actually go ahead and trigger that IPS again. Do some brute force attacks. Do you guys remember? I think the IP address of the uh Windows VM that we have. Let's have a look. Uh, let's check if it's turned on. It's not. I'm going to turn it on. And I'm going to go back to my FortiGet firewall to get the IP address, actually. The public IP. I think... Yeah, the public IP address is the same as the firewall, but on different port. Right? Virtual IPs. Yeah. It will be the same, but on different port. I'm going to wait for the machine to start. Let's give it some time. Okay, I think it's on right now. Let's double check using Bastion. Cyber Excel. I'm going to connect. Yeah, it's not turned on yet. Let's give it some time. Okay, it's coming up. All right, as you can see, the machine is turned on now. Perfect. So if you guys remember when we were doing the configuration, we used the public IP address that was assigned to the firewall itself. Since it's dynamic, it changes every time when you turn off the firewall so i had to turn off my firewall because i couldn't record the part second part of the training at that time so when i turned it back on again it assigned a new ip address to the public ip address of the firewall which is 20 28 it was different now if i want to log back again to this windows machine using the internet not bastion I have to actually, like the traffic will be something like that. This is my home machine. Traffic will come here to the firewall, public IP address, which is the one that I mentioned. The traffic is being natted, then goes all the way back to the Windows machine. Now let's do that together. If you guys remember, uh, we, in we configured a custom IPS policy that triggered the alert whenever someone tries to brute force. Let's do that together then. I'm going to type in a weird username and password multiple times. Let's create this scenario. Perfect, awesome. You see, it, it blocked me. It, did, it didn't allow me to do another uh, RDP session. So if I go back to the log, I should definitely sound like C a UTM alert, but it's going to take some time. So to make things easier for me to look like find the logs, I'm actually going to type in what is my IP. It's 122 right now. Let's uh, filter it based on that. I'm going to change it to This, oh, actually, it's my own IP address. I'm going to change the memory. So definitely, I should see some UTM log here. Again, let's do it multiple times. Okay, cool guys, you see? UTM is the next generation feature, the IPS, the antivirus and all of that. These, the rest of them are ordinary traffic, but this is the IPS policy that we configure here. Client reset. So what I would do right now, I'm going to actually, I think we have to give it some time, but after let's say five or 20 minutes, we can go ahead on Sentinel, and look for this specific log and create an alert based on this. So I'm going to pause this video.
So I went to my Sentinel portal. I went ahead to logs. So as you know, all the logs for the Fortinet are going to get stored in common security log uh, table. The table that I mentioned, we have syslog, other table specifically for this firewall, it's going to get stored in common security log. And when you do that, you're going to get a lot of logs here, right? Exact logs of the syslog. And if you scroll down, you will see something like that, source IP. Now, what I want to do is actually going to create a filter, like a query that's only going to show all the logs that are related to my public IP address, which is this. So let's do that together. So the way to do that is actually, I'm going to click, uh, type in enter. I'm going to use pipe. If you don't know these commands, that's okay. You can use chat GPT actually. It knows about all the queries when it comes to who's to query language, right? Basically you have to just tell chat GPT what kind of a filter you need and it does that for you. So I'm looking for all the logs inside that table that has my public IP on, uh, address inside it, where I'm going to type in source IP that contains my IP address is that one. It's possible that I'm not going to get anything. I think we need to give it more time, but I'm, I'm going to change the time to last 30 minutes and click run. Voila, wow, nice. You see, these are all the logs related to my public address. And this one is specifically what I'm looking for. UTM IPS signature. This is actually the IPS, uh, the signature that we created to block RDP brute force attack. You see, message custom. So if let's say we have configured other IPS signatures on the firewall, it's not going to tell that it's custom. It's going to actually give the name. But in this case, since we built a, built a custom, it's going to tell us that one. So what I would do, I'm going to go back and actually create incident like alerts so we can investigate. So what will happen is if again in future, someone triggers this IPS alert for us, it's going to generate a new ticket for us. That allows to that allows us to do incident response. Uh, I don't know in further investigation. Okay, so let's do that together. As you can see, the Sentinel itself it doesn't understand anything like about these alerts. We have to create those alerts for for it, right? We knew that it received an IPS alert, but as you can see, there is no alert here. So we have to teach it. How are we going to do that? I'm actually going to go and create some workbooks, I think. Sorry, we are going to go to analytics. As you can see, there's nothing here. Let's see together. I'm going to click on Microsoft incident creation rule. So we go to analytics, I'm going to create a new one. I'm going to type in, let's say, FortiGate IPS alerts. All the alerts for the IPS of the full of the firewall. Something like that. It's you can give any description you like. I'm going to change the status to enable. Uh, I'm going to click custom. I'm going to type in IPS alerts. So what I would do, I'm going to click create schedule query rule. It's not related to Microsoft or NRT. I'm going to create my own rule here. 
because with the uh, content that we downloaded for the 14, it doesn't come with the pre-built rules. 40 gate IPS rule. Uh, I'm going to change the severity to, I guess, to medium. It's uh, for brute force, I'm going to change it to high, and I'm going to change the tactic, I think, for mitre attack framework. There should be a somewhere about brute force. Let's see if we can find the brute force here. Uh, I'm not quite sure. Remember, where was it? It's not reconnaissance. Active scanning, no execution, maybe. I think he's in credit, yep, yeah, credential access. That's it. So I'm going to set the logic here. The query, I'm actually going to copy and paste something else i'm not going to contain my ip address i'm going to generate all the ip ips alerts here <coughs> so by default when i run this so it's going to give me all the alerts that are generated by the firewall i'm not looking for that i'm actually looking for the ips alert We are getting so many locks here. Oops, so many locks. So let's go back and use my own IP address because I'm looking for that specific uh, query. Okay. I'm looking for the activity. I just want to make sure that this activity is locked right or even maybe if you if you, if you can we can maybe go inside it where is it ips signature that's the one let's go activity severity 7 message what can we do device event category UTM IPS. I want to make sure that all the IPS alerts are logged into Sentinel and a, tick a, crea a ticket is created for that. So device event category. So I'm going to remove all of it. Instead of source IP, I'm going to type in device event category. Okay. Contains. IPS, that's it. So if I run this, I, I'm going to get two IPS alerts, the same uh, alerts that we received on the firewall because we did two brute force attack on the machine. And we have two of these, which is perfect. I'm going to copy and paste it, copy and paste it here. That's it. So test with current data. Okay, we have two. See? Awesome. That's what I want, actually. Uh, and I'm going to do some entity mapping. So let's say I'm actually going to map it to IP address. The source IP address of the attacker. Okay. Another one I'm going to maybe create a host host name not the host because it's behind the firewall it doesn't make sense how can i check it um what what entity we can link into url no account another Nah, that should be all right. I don't need another entity. Alert details. I'm I'm not going to touch that. I'm going to make sure 
that this query is being running every five minutes, I guess. You know, we can leave it as that automatically. I'm not, I don't care. Anytime that this alert is triggered, I want to receive an incident, a ticket, a ticket for this. Group all in, uh, events into a single alert. Next. I don't want to group this at this stage. This is something else for you guys. If you want to get more into details, there are so many Sentinel training out there. Automated response. This is something else. We don't want to do any automation. All we care about is to create an alert, a ticket based on that uh, IPS alert. Review and create. Save. So honestly, after a few minutes, it should go ahead and create an incident for us, guys. I'm going to pause this video and see if there will be any tickets created for that. Okay. All right. As you can see, guys. So when I go to the overview, uh, let's refresh it. I'm not sure why am I not receiving any alert, but you see guys, incident, a new ticket has been created. So this is typical security analyst. You as a SOC analyst, as an analyst, you have to go ahead and investigate these tickets. Incident, you see, this is the one that you have created. I changed the severity to high. Let's click on view full details. Awesome. So you see, this is the entity. This is the IP address of the attacker, my IP address, and it's using credential access brute force techniques. So you guys are not responsible for creating these alerts, but you as a SOC analyst should learn about KQL. Let's say there is a new incident, there is an IPS that has been configured by the administrator. You need to make sure that whenever that IPS or firewall rule is triggered, there will be alert generated for you guys for the investigation. Uh, if you click on it, it's going to give you the exact details of the alert. Status is new. Severity is high. The source IP address, the system alert, like everything is all here. Now you can actually go ahead, run a playbook, or do other stuff. Let's click on investigate. Awesome. I mean, there are so many things that you can do from now on. You can connect this uh, Sentinel to a threat intelligence. That's actually going to check the IP address if it's coming from a known threat actor and all, all of that. So there are so many things that you can do here. If you want me to do more training on the Sentinel part, please leave a comment below and let me know. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out to me. I'm happy to answer those, uh, those questions. In any case, I hope this training was informative to you guys. I'm happy to provide more training, but... You, I, you have to let me know by locking and sharing these videos with everyone else. Thank you so much for watching. See you in the next training.